everybody. Patrick Sheridan here, live on the campus of Fresno State University. And this is Lawrence R. Sutherland. The man. The wind festival. The legend. <laughs> the human behind the wind <laughs> festival. How are you, Larry? I'm great. Just terrific. It's great to see you. I have to tell the audience that uh, we are. We have something. We have three things in common that that that, that I know of. We're both low brass players. Yeah, we both served as the director of the UCLA Wind Ensemble right. for a year. Yep. And we both have a have a a, a admiration and and possibly a professional lust for Philip Wilby. That's and right. His music. Oh boy, that's true. Yeah, love his stuff. Yep, yep. So uh, <clears throat> you were here since 1969. In 1981, you decided to start this festival. 1979. 79. 79. Yeah. Wow. 38 years ago. That's amazing. Um, and uh, I was reading a little bit about that. Uh, you sort of had noticed the kind of feedback and community and sort of sort of energy gathering that was going around the jazz band being able to go to collegiate jazz festival exactly like yeah you felt like that the wind band world needed something similar indeed uh yeah. w my jazz band would go to these to the northwest jazz festival the berkeley and they would hear all the other college bands play and they knew exactly where where the bands stood in in comparison to all the other bands and what the level of performance was and I thought, number among other things, it would be great to have that same energy and excitement in the wind ensemble field. And also, I got tired of going to playing at MENC conferences with a, with a 40 people with a room with 10 foot ceilings. You know, <laughs> so we had a, a couple of nice halls here, and so we started out with all colleges, <clears throat> and we had. UCLA, Fullerton, San Diego, Northridge, uh, San Jose, University of Washington, University of Oregon, blah, blah, blah. We just had a bunch of wonderful college bands play that my kids could hear right. and, and compare themselves to, to the, those bands and get, you know, so it was a really good situation. I really enjoyed it. Hey, I think, well, it's a wonderful uh, reason to have a Genesis for a festival and to, to bring it together. So I, I asked, I don't get a chance to ask many people that have been a director of bands and a really fine wind ensemble leader uh, this question, uh, but uh, do you feel like the experience and the teaching and the demand as a performer and as a teacher that you always had one foot solidly squarely in the improvisation and jazz world uh, gives you a uh, a, a leg up in the classical world? Well, I sure do. I don't think there's anything that you can do in music that doesn't uh, add to your understanding of it. And you just put it in your computer and your in your bag of tricks and you can't tell when it's going to have to come up again. You know, I mean, it, just sight reading music, you call upon all these experiences that you've had mm -hmm. And I've been I've been lucky enough to be able to sight read under some pretty I mean I I conducted the Fresno Philharmonic on several concerts with no rehearsal and and some of the pieces I'd never heard before, you know sight reading the concert with a professional orchestra, mm -hmm. and uh, I sat in uh, a professional jazz band without ever seeing the music on a public performance, but I was able to do it because of all the experiences I had playing. Yeah. And doing, you know, there's no bad gig. You can, you just got to do it all. Yeah, Got to sure. do it all. Well, I think that's another the thing that, the example that you provide that is oh, some, some huge advertisement for me, but I'm not sure that it's, it registers with everybody, is that you remained active as a performer your entire career. I still am, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, and, at, and, at a, and at a very high professional level uh, in, in, in the, <clears throat> multiple genres and I think that's the I, as I see the curriculums uh, larger and larger ed programs being stuffed with more and more things and things like having more semesters of lessons and longer periods of time where you have learn how to play other instruments becoming a smaller and smaller part of how you teach band in terms of what a college offers uh, and think that that is the opposite message of the success of people like yourself who have an incredibly great set of ears in front of a band, but born of being a performer. Sure. And so the real message is, if you want to really, you're never going to make a band better than your ears can hear, <laughs> and the best way to make your ears hear is to play music. It's, you've got to be on the other side of the stick occasionally. Yeah. You know, that's just, uh, 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 you need to do it. If you're going to lead music, you got to play music. Yep, you yeah. bet. And I've seen, I've got, 
I'm proud to say a lot of these conductors were my students mm -hmm. in the sense that they were in my band. Some of them were my private trombone euphonium students. But I'm so glad to see the good work that they're doing. You know, it just, it's wonderful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think that was the, the thing that I was always, when I was at the teaching at UCLA, before the, I had the wind ensemble, was you know, with the opportunities of, in the jazz side that were available there with guys like Kenny that were on the faculty. Um, but especially for the, the, the sake of doubling and what that forces your ear to do, um, makes a better educator on the other side of that. And, oh, sure. And, uh, I think that's, the, that's, that, that's, that's my, other than your output as an artist, both as a player and as a conductor, the, my favorite part of the message of, of you is in the field is that, that your level of expertise as a, on this side of the stick <laughs> comes from staying a practitioner on the other side. You bet, side. I think it is. And, I, and, I, and I, enjoy, I just love music, whatever it is. You know, I can play a Portuguese street parade or, or a, you know, a jazz combo gig or whatever, and it's, there's always something fun to do. It's always great. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, what do you think uh, right now in terms of, uh, other than uh, the, the things that Philip are doing, have the latest uh, repertoire that you have that you've heard and you're like I've, oh, I really I love just, that piece. Or I just you, hear I, I can't I'm terrible with names, but just in this in this festival here and and I've been I judged I'm judging four two day festivals in three weeks, so I'm, my ears are kind of burning. But I've heard so much wonderful new stuff in the last year or so. I just heard the Marine Band play at the ABA convention in mm -hmm. Kentucky and they played a two and a half hour concert and they had some fantastic new pieces. Everybody's getting excited about writing for wins, you know, because they know they're going to get played, right. which, which is one thing, and, and hopefully they know they're going to get uh, published, which is another thing. Right, exactly. So it's great, it's just terrific. So you're digging what you're hearing and oh and, I am yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. There's some great new stuff I yes heard the marine band in uh, um, uh, how are we doing down there on stage heard the marine band at the at the Midwest yeah and, uh, there's some great there's stuff right Jim now. Stevenson's symphony number no. two yeah well they played yeah isn't that something it's impossible to play it I mean you know uh, there are very few bands that can play it but uh, it's it's amazing music yeah nice piece of music Jeez. So we have uh, Colonel Colburn here judging for us. Yeah, yeah he was yeah. Yeah, he was one of the directors of the band. And, well, yeah. if you had, if you could, uh, let's see, they're warming up. So we should probably close it down. Can you stay through this and talk for the next segment? Sure. I'd love to ask yeah. you some questions to give some advice to young directors about the things that they should be thinking about in their first couple of years. But sure. I don't want the audience to miss oh, out right. on this. Oh, right. Yeah. No, band, of course not. So uh, we're going to go down now and hear. Oh man, where are we? This is. Uh, Central, right? Yeah, Central. Yep, this is Central High School Wind Ensemble. Uh, Leonard de Grande uh, is their conductor, and they're going to play the Overture to Candy, and they're going to play the finale from Symphony Number no. Five, Shostakovich. <laughs> wow! Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> so stay yeah. tuned. Let's go down into the hall now, and uh, we'll be back uh, after the next group and have another chance to chat with Larry Sutherland. Thanks for tuning in here on BandDirector.com. <laughs> 